Hello and welcome to Trainer Mike. In this video I will be giving a brief tour of the many features of this program. Okay, when you first start the program the first thing that will happen will be is you'll be asked to enter a user profile. So just enter in a name and the name will do. Then you want to select your wheel size or several to choose from. Uh, if you know the rollout of your wheel in millimeters, you can just enter that manually or select from the drop-down list. Um, after that, you want to select your units, whether it's uh, metric, kilometers and kilograms, or imperial, miles per hour and pounds. Then you want to enter in your weight uh, for your rider, for your clothing, and the bicycle. Uh, generally, you want to go with what, uh, what you would use on the road. Over here, we have the power settings. So you have an option to uh, show the power on the main screen or not. You can also disable showing calories. Uh, these two coefficients, this is your coefficient for frictional losses and your coefficient for aerodynamic drag, those go into the function for calculating your power based upon your speed. Human efficiency, uh, this is interesting, this is the uh, percentage of, uh, or your, your efficiency at which you convert uh, food energy into actual energy, so if you're uh, burning uh, 100 watts, you're actually burning 400 watts of, of fuel, or food. Uh, this, generally the average for humans is 22%. Uh, really elite athletes might have a higher efficiency, but generally that can stay the same. Uh, down here, you can you can edit these manually, or you can just select uh, from your an existing trainer type, such as a, uh, you can go with a road, um, a food trainer, a uh, wind trainer or magnetic trainer, that uh, selecting this will automatically change these coefficients. You can also just enter them in manually if you know the power curve for your trainer. But lastly, there is uh, several icons to choose from. There's 61 icons. Um, these, uh, your, the icon you select here, display on the main screen and display on other people's screens when you use the uh, multiplayer feature. Next thing you want to do is uh, check out the right profiles. So TrainerMet comes with seven road ride profiles to choose from. You can also add as many as you wish. You can uh, modify these, delete them, create copies. Uh, you can also export uh, to a file and send it to your friends if you want to share profiles, or you can and you can also import. Um, what I suggest doing generally is is if you want to create your own ride profile, select one that is close to kind of what you're looking for and then just uh, make click copy and then uh, edit it this way. So let's uh, change this one to, uh, let's leave a copy of intervals ascending. Uh, this one's an, it's an hour long, let's say you had only 30 minutes, what you do is put in 30 minutes in the target time, apply, and that automatically shorten the ride to 30 minutes and, and uh, cut all the, uh, the interval lengths in half. Now let's say you want to, uh, these intervals are two minutes uh, one minute each. Let's say you want to change that to 30 seconds. You can just put in 30 seconds. Boom. 30 seconds. Boom. And uh, to change the speed, let's say this this last one, these last two are at 40. Let's say you want to increase that to uh, let's say do one at 45. Done. And then one. Let's say you want to do one at 50. To make it really difficult. And then let's reduce that to uh, 20 seconds. Okay, and uh, you can also uh, select a user profile, and that will tell you how many calories you would burn if you followed this profile exactly. Uh, the distance we will travel on this is uh, 14 plus 70 kilometers. Let's say you uh, you want to change the target. Let's say you want to do like a 20k ride, so you can just put in 20k. Apply. That will uh, automatically stretch the ride to 20 kilometers, and correspondingly increase all your speeds so that you uh, you will meet that distance. And that gives you an average speed of 42 kilometers an hour for this ride profile. It's only 30 minutes, so that's going to be a really uh, challenging workout. Let's click OK, and close. Once you've done that, all you got to do is select, your ride pro select the user profile, select the, uh, the ride profile you just entered, and uh, start racing. OK, I just want to show some of the things on the main screen. Up here we have the, uh, this shows the signal coming from the sensor. 
so I don't have a sensor hooked up right now, but uh, generally when you're riding you'll see kind of a sine wave, or a square wave coming off the sensor. This little animation shows the rotation of your wheel. This is the sensitivity, if, depending on how you position the sensor, you might need to bump up the sensitivity a bit. Generally I would recommend leaving it at 2. Uh, and just slowly increasing it until you get a signal, but usually two is more than enough. Uh, with different trainer types, because uh, there's very little momentum when you're on a trainer, you know, you don't have your uh, forward momentum, just the rotation of the wheel is the only momentum you have, so uh, the speed can be a little bit erratic, um, depending on how much, um, depending on the type of trainer you're using, so the, I just keep, there's an option to smooth the speed, which will smooth, which will take the average speed over several readings. Generally, I just keep that keep that checked. Um, if you're using a uh, track bike or a fixed gear bike, or just using one gear for throughout your workout, you can have the option of showing your cadence. So you center in your, your chain wheel, your cog, and that will calculate your cadence from your speed. Uh, zoom, zoom is zoom is very useful. If you uh, you can obviously at, at zoom zero, you will see the entire ride. Uh, you can zoom right right down to uh, to basically a few seconds or a few few meters if you got the distance option chosen, and uh, that will make the screen quite dynamic. It makes it a lot more fun to follow and uh, chase that icon across the screen as you're looking out. And uh, lastly, there's an option here you can uh, change the bottom axis to time if you just want to see the time of your workout, or you can set it at uh, distance to see the actual distance between you and the uh, the uh, profile icon which you're supposed to be following. And of course you can uh, pause the ride at any time or resume. If your speed drops to zero it will automatically pause and the uh, ride profile template will, uh, will wait for you to uh, start running again. Another feature in Trainer Mike is the workout log. After you finish finished a ride you can just go up to uh, workout log, click add, pause that, click on add. And basically, that will uh, that will save your uh, profile of your ride, and also all the uh, the start time, the user profile, the the ride profile you used, uh, the duration, distance, full calories, max power, and your max speed. You can also change units for that, and uh, y that will be saved to a workout log, which you can track all your uh, all your workouts. You can also uh, export these. A, uh, to a to to an XML file, which you can then send to another user. So if you want to send to your coach or somebody who wants to have a look at your ride, you can also, when you uh, save a workout log, the the power profile is saved to a CSV file, which you can then import into any spreadsheet program, and then you can then you can do further analysis on your power, track it, you know, calculate your training test score, and uh, and use. There's uh, several programs out there for uh, for power analysis and uh, you know plotting workouts and whatnot. So uh, more advanced users can take advantage of that. Last but not least, we have the multiplayer, which is uh, really easy to use and uh, lots of fun. All you do is click on multiplayer and open up the race list. Uh, there's no races right now in the system, but uh, all you gotta do is click Add New Race. You can specify a start time. Let's say there's a race starting tonight at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, started by you, the user. Uh, you can use the race team. Uh, race. You can specify a rider limit. Uh, if you put a limit of zero, that will allow unlimited riders. Otherwise, it'll it'll stop allowing people to join after you reach that limit. Uh, there's an optional password. Uh, so if you only want certain people to join, you can just uh, tell them the password, and only people who know the password can join the race. You can select a ride profile. The ride profile is in your database, and uh, or you can just specify. You can just say there's no there's none, and you can say we want to race at 20k or whatever you want. Um, you can also enter a brief description if you want to enter in location and where you are. And then there's also this list here to show you the number of people who have signed up for the race. Obviously, this is a new race, so no one's signed up yet. Just click OK to save, and that puts that into the race list. Anyone who logs in will then see this race, and then they can just uh, join it to to join. Just click the race. Join selected race. That pops up. Tells you the start time. Fire limit. Um, you can hit the password, and uh, you can say, hey, if I want to do this race, just click join. It'll, it'll ask you to enter your writer name, just confirm, and if there was a password, you can enter a password now. Otherwise, you're in, and uh, that is that.